Hi folks, Bill Vales here for another edition of Your Backyard. Uh, we have a glorious fall day today. And uh, for this edition of Your Backyard, we're at the George and Lucy Yap Conservation Trail. And this is off of Newtown Road in Littleton. And uh, George and uh, Lucy Yap property uh, is former farmland and woods that uh, is approximately 54 acres in size. And one of the nice features of this property is that it joins other properties in the Littleton uh, Conservation Trail portfolio. And where we're gonna be today, just to point this out, is we're, we've parked right here today, and we're gonna proceed along this yellow line here, and we're gonna go to a little pond here that is probably dry, it's an ephemeral pond, a vernal pool, and then we're gonna come back and go down to an area of Fort Rock and then we're going to loop around to the Cobb, just to the start of the Cobb property here which we featured on a, a previous show and we're going to come back and loop around towards Shaker Lane and then we're going to come out and uh, the, the property here is really a mature wooded area with the uh, remaining trees uh, that are left and we'll we'll talk a little bit uh, as we get into the program um, about the trees the uh, again one of the nice features of this property is it forms the greater Neshoba woodlands collection of properties so we see here the Georgian Lucy Yap property from here we can also get to the Morrison Trail and go over to Sarah Dublet which is on the other end of uh, town. Or we can go to the Morrison, um, we can come around here and go over to the Cobb Memorial Forest, uh, which um, will end at uh, Neshoba Road, which is over in that direction. And uh, it, it, it really makes for a nice collection of properties, both for us humans to walk through and also for animals to give them a continuous tracts of land um, uh, for their survival in their backyard. So with that said, let's start off on this beautiful fall day. Couldn't ask for a better day and um, let's see what we find. Well, just at the beginning of the trail, which is off of Newtown Road, uh, we, we find a huge oak tree. And this is a, a sample of some of the large tree specimens that have been left on this property. This oak tree is, is, is huge. Here's my hiking stick, probably five feet across, you get a sense for the size of this. It's probably six, seven feet across. It's a huge, and it's a white oak tree, okay? And if you remember from previous shows, this is a test, how do we tell a white oak tree? One way, when there's leaves, which there are now, beautiful fall leaves, the white oak tree leaf has rounded edges on them, rounded edges. And we're going to contrast that a little later in the show with the red oak tree, which has pointed edges. And there might even be some black oak trees out here. I'm kind of debating on that. Now, one thing I've noticed uh, for the last several years as I drive by this property is on these, these fences here, I regularly have been seeing bluebirds okay, that come to those uh, fences and rest. And in the field that's behind us are a number of bluebird boxes. And bluebirds will come out, they'll do their uh, hunting for food, bugs, and, and they'll tend to rest. And they'll rest on these, on the fences. And uh, I always see bluebirds here. It's uh, just a beautiful bird, but uh, next time you're going down Newtown Road, take a look at this oak tree. It's a, 
it, it, it's huge, absolutely huge. Over here to my left, a little bit behind me, is a beautiful uh, hickory tree turning golden yellow as they do during the fall. And that's a, uh, no, not a shagbark hickory, that's a, a pignut hickory tree. There's some other yellows around here. I see uh, what looks like a black walnut tree over there. Uh, okay, we have a, a, a break in the trail here. We have the, the Morrison, towards the Morrison Trail and Fort Rock uh, artifact is gonna be down here. And that's the way that we're gonna take in, uh, we're, we're gonna enter this property. And the Shaker Lane Trail, which is the way that we're gonna come out, is right here to my left. I want to call to your attention several rock piles that are around here. And many of the rock piles that we see around here are the result of rocks that were cleared from the fields for various farming activities. Uh, there was a lot of um, uh, apple farming, fruit farming. Uh, there's an area over that part of the property to the, um, uh, uh, I'm going to say the northwest that is called the peach orchard and way back that was used for peach farming uh, but more recently it was used for apple apple orchards and uh, I got that uh, tidbit from Peter Yap. Um, now these piles of rocks here as I said were from clearing uh, this area. Uh, there is some bedrock that clearly has not been moved and uh, we're going to call out uh, some of those things as we proceed on. Well, not too far down the trail, in fact, maybe 150 feet or so, we run into a large red oak tree. And I want to call this out to contrast it with the large white oak tree we saw when we first entered the property. And this uh, red oak tree, you can see how large it is. Pretty large, okay. The obvious way this time of year, while there's still leaves, is the red oak tree has the pointed leaf. Okay. And the white oak tree has the rounded leaf. So the rounded leaf is the white oak tree near the road, and the pointed leaf is the red oak tree right here behind me. Now, there are other ways to differentiate between the two species. Once the leaves are gone, we've lost the ability to do that, but there are differences in the bark, okay? And we'll talk about uh, differentiating trees by bark later in this show and other shows. And then also the fruit that the trees give. There are differences between the types of acorns that each tree grows and sheds. But this is a Real nice red oak tree, uh, quite old, and wanted to point that out. And I'm on one of these rock piles that was built here to clear the fields. Big rocks. I think what we actually have here are two different hickory trees. On the left, I believe is a pignut hickory tree, and on the right is a shagbark hickory tree. I'm seeing differences in the leaves, differences in the leaves. The shagbark hickory seems a little bit larger. Um, let me see if there's any. Oh, here's a. Um, yeah, here they. Here's some. Yeah, lots of. Uh, uh, these look like pignut, pignut hickory nuts here. I notice in the tree on the right there's a cavity there. I'm, uh, uh, cavities make great places for birds to nest. I, um, I hope there's something living in there or actually had been living in there, but would probably make a nice nesting cavity for a woodpecker, maybe a saw wet owl, uh, some other species. But the biggest clue to the differences in those 
two trees to my eye is the bark, where the tree on the right seems to be peeling a little bit. And that's, that's a sign for a um, shagbark hickory. This is the tree, I've got to do a little research on this, but this is the tree that the leaf to me, this is an oak tree. The leaf here did not sing out red, red oak. Definitely not a white oak. Well, definitely not a white oak, definitely not a red oak. I'm wondering what this is. If this could be maybe a black oak, uh, I'm just not sure. But I like mysteries like that. It, it, it lets me make use of the field guides that I've invested a lot of money in. Um, and I'll probably pick a leaf or two of this at the end of our trip and uh, leave me with a little project for the rest of the day. I want to point out, we're not quite into the woods yet. We're, we're a step away, you know, with only a half an hour already invested in what we've done. But I want to point out uh, a type of rock that we're going to find on this property. And the, the rock is uh, referred to as pegmatite. And pegmatite tends to be a large, has large crystals in it. And you can see here uh, large crystals of feldspar and quartz in this rock. And you'll see this pegmatite uh, joined up with other types of rocks, such as gneiss and schist. And we'll see that as we go in here. But because this rock, uh, this piece of pegmatite was by itself, I wanted to point that out to you. Now, the farmers, I believe, referred to this as rotten stone. And the reason it was called rotten stone was it tends to break. It tends to break fairly easily uh, because of the uh, differential weathering that occurs between the different crystals, uh, crystal types. The feldspar will weather out before the uh, quartz or the amphibolites and, and cause the rock to break off. So while the, uh, the farmer would refer to this as rotten stone, there you can see some of it breaking off already. It's, it, it's not good for foundations, not good for uh, rock walls, maybe. Um, but it, it, it's good for mineral collectors and rock collectors. And this is pegmatite, so keep your eyes open for pegmatites, large, large grains, okay? On either side of me are two pine trees. To my left here, we have a white pine. And this is a young tree, 30, maybe, maybe 40 years old tops. And on my right, we have a red pine. And this provides a nice contrast in the different colors of the bark. You see here the white pine color of this bark, it's kind of a dullish gray, but you can see the tinges of red here in the red pine. And you can also see that the red pine has kind of a large, larger platy structure associated with the uh, barks. So using more than the leaf type is a valuable tool to differentiate the various, the various species. And we're gonna talk about other ways um, we can do that, but uh, bark type is an obvious, and where these were next to one another, couldn't pass up the opportunity. As I said, it's a beautiful day. Clear, cool, beautiful colors, uh, beautiful trails. These trails are fairly wide because they were uh, farm trails that we used to take vehicles down in some cases. Absolutely beautiful area. Easy walking. We have a lot of acorns on the ground this year and some of the folklore associated with the amount of acorns we have 
is that when we have large ac uh, a large amount of acorns, we're going to get a very um, hard winter, hard in terms of snowfall. We'll see, um, uh, but that but that's the folklore about the acorns. They are like walking on marbles, so you really need to watch your step uh, as you walk through the trails because you can uh, really take a header uh, stepping on these acorns. Uh, what a beautiful day. Over here, we have a what looks like a red oak tree. I'm going to check the leaf out. Oh, yep, this is a red oak tree, quite large. And on this tree, you can see barbed wire that was near the tree. And it's actually grown, the, the tree has grown around the barbed wire and quite a bit quite a bit. I'll look on the other side where the barbed wire may come out. And this is the reason, one of the reasons why sawmills do not like to take trees off of private property. They like to know where their trees have come from. Because you can cut this tree down, not know that there's metal in it in the form of barbed wire or nails or whatnot. And when that runs through the uh, sawmill, it can be very dangerous. You can take out a blade, which is very expensive, or it can cause fragments to fly in areas that you don't want to. So this is a, a great example of why sawmills like Parlay would not want to take uh, uh, trees off of private property. Well, look what we have here. We have some, what we refer to as princess pine. Now, these really aren't related to the pine family. These are in the family of club mosses. And these are some of the oldest vascular plants known to man. These are related, these are referred to as lycopods. And these are related to plants that were around during the Carboniferous period, about 350 million years ago, when we had vast, of, vast expanses of ferns and vegetation that makes up our coal beds of, of today, coal and oil resources. And these are related to the a family that the Lepidodendron tree is in. And again, that's back around the Carboniferous age, might even go back a little bit further to the Devonian or the Silurian age. Uh, very old, and uh, that's what these are. And we're going to edit in a little later on. I happen to have at home a fossil of a Lepidodendron tree that we're going to edit in. This is beautiful with these leaves coming down. And a lot of the leaves that are coming down right now are from black birch. And there are some beautiful black birches around here. Talking to one of the sons of the owner of the property, he recounted to me that uh, he was told by a forester from Massachusetts that this property had some of the best black birch growth that he's ever seen. And I can attest to it. There's a lot of beautiful black birch trees around here. We're approaching a split in the trail here. Off to my right now, we'll go over to the Shaker Lane area. And straight ahead is going to take us to Fort Rock. Um, absolutely beautiful day. A problem that I have when I walk in here is that some of the trees are so large, I'm looking up instead of looking ahead. And I'll trip on things, I'll spin out on acorns. So um, be forewarned. 
this is interesting. I want to point out for you here. Uh, this is some of that rotten stone pegmatite. Uh, and it, it has, it's right next to some different type, a different type of rock, which is probably nice. And I'd like to point out, and that's nice as in G-N-E-I-S-S, -S, as opposed to, hey, you're very nice. And something I want to uh, point out here is that here's the large grain pegmatite. We see here the quartz, a little bit gray, the feldspar white. Here we see some black, okay? And the black is prob uh, most likely a horn blend or amphibole uh, uh, type minerals, which tend to be black. I do see some glints of mica. However, I don't see any books that would really show show it clearly. And then up here, we have this finer grain, this finer grain uh, rock type here. The minerals here are finer grain. So these finer grain minerals cooled very slowly. Uh, take that back. You probably caught that though. These finer grain minerals cooled very quickly, relatively speaking. And because they cooled very quickly, that meant they didn't have the time to grow. Whereas the pegmatite, these crystals had a lot longer time to cool. And because of that, the minerals grew. They grew larger. And to see the point of contact here between some uh, finer grain minerals in rocks and larger grain minerals is interesting. Now, the question that comes to my mind, might not come to your mind as you walk through, but that comes to my mind is, which was here first? Which was here first? And I'm going to leave you with that puzzle. We're approaching another split in the trail. And you know what Yogi Berra says, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. Actually, the way that we're going to take is we're going to go off to the left here because we want to go towards Fort, uh, Fort Rock and Picard Lane. Uh, I'd like to mention about some of the trees that we see here. Uh, I did mention the black, uh, the black birch, but we're going to get into an area now where we're going to see a, a, a number of hemlock trees. Uh, and hemlock trees tend to like a, a wetter sort of environment. And hemlock is just a, a very, um, there's a large bird back there. But I'm, I'm going to focus back in here. Uh, uh, hemlock trees tend to like a wetter environment. So there's no surprise that uh, we, we find it over there because there is a vernal pool over there. A vernal pool is a uh, pool that uh, will tend to have water only part of the year, typically in spring. Uh, serves for a lot of breeding of, of um, uh, bugs and amphibians and then it dries up in, uh, uh, during the uh, summer and gets uh, charged up every year and vernal pools are a very important link to a healthy forest ecosystem. Uh, but we're going to go towards Fort Rock. Something I want to say about the trees here in addition is that there was over 10,000 trees that were planted here back in the, I want to say it was around the 60s and they were planted here as kind of a um, conifer Christmas tree project and there was a variety of trees Douglas fir, Norway spruce, um, I believe red spruce, white spruce and a lot of these trees did not survive either because the climate wasn't quite right for the species or, or for other reasons so we may see uh, remnants of uh, of some of that throughout here, but let me tell you the the trees that have survived here the white pines the hemlocks They're huge 
110, 120 feet. Uh, they're just, uh, I have all I can do to keep my eyes below where I'm walking rather than look up, but uh, they are huge. So let's head over to Fort Rock. Well, I'm starting to hear some birds. I'm hearing blue jays, I'm hearing the chatter of nut hatches, which is a very pleasant sound to my ear. I'm hearing them bounce around the forest. But a, a landform that I've noticed here and is documented in the trail guide uh, that's put out is that this area is actually the area of a ancient uh, fault line, geological fault line. Now, a fault line is a fracture in the earth. And you can see on, on both sides here, we have bedrock to the left, bedrock to the right, and we've been pretty much going through an area where, where that's been the situation. And we're, we're a little bit lower. Now, this fracture most likely occurred well below the surface. Okay, could have even been miles below the surface. And over time, as the surface eroded, perhaps with some plate tectonic activity, the uh, fault has now moved up and we see it on the surface. So as you walk through here, look to the left, look to the right, and you'll see this ancient fault area. And, th and this provides a couple things. It provides a great area for humans such as us to walk through. It also provides a very clear uh, path for animals to travel along. Um, and it makes for a very pleasant environment. Well, here's a neat configuration through our little fault zone here of uh, a tree in between two rocks or two pieces of what was the same rock. Of course, when a rock is split off, it becomes multiple rocks. And Mark and I were just talking about the origins of this tree, and I won't go into the gory details about that, but the plausible hypothesis is this tree is a black birch tree covered with moss, beautiful greens, mosses, lichens, um, you see some nice lichen here. And remember, we're liking lichen. And, and this is a black birch. And what probably happened was this rock has been here for a while. And this tree, which is about 30, 40 years old, grew up between it and assisted in the mechanical weathering, the mechanical erosion, if you will, of the rock. And by mechanical weathering, I mean uh, forces that were prying this apart, perhaps ice, freezing, thawing cycles, but certainly a tree growing against the two pieces of rock would separate it. But this is this is really neat. And um, this is right by the Fort Rock area. So as you, as you uh, approach Fort Rock, you'll, you'll notice this. There's another large, large boulder here. Lichen, moss, all my favorite colors, which are green. Covered with black birch leaves and also white pine bundles. And we're going to talk about those bundles a little later. But let's go over to Fort Rock. Here we are at Fort Rock. I've heard a number of stories about Fort Rock that a lot of the locals, they used to play here. And the stories I get from my older friends uh, that Kids used to play here 70 years ago, and probably even further back than that. Um, this uh, pegmatite, because again we see the pegmatite crystals 
all through this rock, feldspar, we see mica, I see mica here, quartz. It's really large and it's just a great place for kids to play around in. I see here what looks like a fort someone's making. Uh, what a wonderful place for your imagination to just run wild. The pegmatite crystals here are really pretty neat. They're quite large, large quartz crystals and, and feldspar all through it. So this is definitely pegmatite, no, no doubt about it. I have here a couple black birch, some of these fine looking black birch trees growing through, uh, helping with the mechanical weathering of this. Um, and these black birch are just delightful. You see how the, the, the bark kind of peels away a little on a black birch. And you have these horizontal, horizontal lenticels, which you see on birch trees, which are really a sign of a healthy birch tree. Okay, uh, the, the, the lenticels uh, help the tree exchange gases and take in air from the environment. But these are uh, two black birch trees here. Fort Rock, I'm going to walk a little bit around here. Well, here I am under the roof of the fort here, and I come out clearly at a higher place than my surroundings. And what a neat place for not just kids to play, but people to come and just relax. There's plenty of places to sit around. Um, just enjoy the view. Uh, if you sit up here and you're quiet, you could probably see an occasional deer come through. I'm sure you'll see uh, birds. Uh, I notice here, I, I'm really struck by some of the quartz in here. There's some large pieces of quartz throughout this pegmatite that um, when you come up here, you know, look through this stuff and, and ex explore. This is a delightful place. Now, in addition to the acorns, which are like walking on marbles, it's a little bit damp today. Um, from last night, we had some rain, some well-needed rain, but these leaves are pretty slick, okay? So you need to watch your, your footing on, on a couple different accounts. So we're going to head down here. Oh, here's some horses. Some people with horses right over here. On this part of um, Fort Rock, I want to make note on this pegmatite that's up here. We see the feldspar, the white. We see the quartz over here, the grayish, grayish white, lots of quartz through here. But we get a pretty good look uh, at, at the mica here. And here you can start seeing some mica. And mica separates into these books, you know, mica peels this way and this is all mica here. Here we go. You see how that's peeling in a book? It cleaves in a in a book. And the common types of mica that we see around here are biotite mica, which is black, which is what we're seeing here, or the clear mica, which is muscovite mica. And mica was a very important mineral used uh, during the war, and it also has a high temperature applications for uh, being used in furnaces, um, glass uh, windows into, into hot places. Okay, so this is classic uh, uh, pegmatite, where you have a combination of quartz, feldspar, and mica. Okay, those are the classic minerals that you would get in a pegmatite and different percentages of each of those minerals will yield a slightly different rock. Um, this is a wonderful place to uh, 
as a destination on the, on the Yap property. Fort Rock, come here, make some memories. And uh, here we go. Well, we're right below Fort Rock here, and we, we're at a point where the trail splits in a couple directions. We have the Shaker Lane Trail over here. We have the trail that goes to the Cobb property here and has noted by the sign Newtown Road, which is the way that we came in. And we're going to end this segment of your backyard right here at Fort Rock, but we're going to get you out of here because the next segment of your backyard is going to pick up from this position. So I hope you found this an, an enjoyable and informative uh, show. I know I've had a great time shooting it. See you next time.